Wonderful. Well, welcome everybody to this How I Built It session with special guest Alex Howard from Nextdoor, where he leads the engineering team for the Discover Experience and the Maps platform. I'm Marina, the customer community lead at Mapbox. Um, so we're going to be doing this interview style. So I have a few questions to discuss with Alex, and then we'll open up to audience Q&A. You can either submit a question in the chat, uh, or when it's time, you can raise your hand and be invited to ask a question live. All right. So quick warm up question, Alex. Could you help us set the scene for folks here briefly? Tell us what is Nextdoor and how do maps create value for, for your users? Yeah. Um, thanks, Maria. Um, yeah, so so Nextdoor is the neighborhood social network, and specifically that means social network centered around your neighborhood, where you live, uh, and the people that live near you. Um, we're across 11 countries and 300,000 neighborhoods right now, um, one in three households in the U.S., um, and yeah, people, people use Nextdoor every day to get trusted information, right? There's, there's something different about connecting to somebody who lives next to you or down the block from you. Um, and sort of that's the, the general vision of Nextdoor is to return to that. Um, cause I think with all social networks and the internet as a whole, we're sort of getting more anonymous and more further, far away from each other and not really forming those in, in world connections. Um, so a lot of Nextdoor is trying to facilitate that we see each other every day that we do something together that we connect with each other and help each other and, and stay connected that way. Um, and then the discover team specifically, uh, we're, we're trying to sort of, uh, expand that, that concept out a little bit more, um, sort of you take next door with you, you can, you can discover what's going on around you, get the vibe of a place really quickly. So if you're traveling, you should be able to understand how those locals live and how they connect and what they do and things that are special to them um, and and get connected there, not just at your home or when you're visiting your family and you know your cousins and whatever, you are part of that community in some way too. And we wanna, we wanna connect people to that. Yeah, I love that. Nextdoor is super popular here where I live in Hawaii. People are posting on it all the, all the time, all about the lava right now. So it's a, <laughs> oh, no. it's a really useful platform. <laughs> yeah, That's we great. have an eruption. It's helpful. Very exciting. <laughs> um, all right. So this is a how I built it session. Um, and I know we've got some fellow engineers and developers here in the audience. So could you share some stories from building Nextdoor's map features? What have been some of your key priorities or learnings? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so you know, I um, when I when I joined Nextdoor, Maps was sort of like a thing that had been done when needed or absolutely necessary for something. It wasn't really like a primary focus, which is surprising given that Nextdoor is you know neighborhood focus. That's all about location. Um, so when I was joining, it was specifically starting up a team dedicated to Maps. It kind of grew into becoming the Discover team but we didn't really want to let maps go. Um, and at the time, you know, because everything was built all over the place, it was all built differently. It was all built using different systems or APIs or whatever. Um, and that's where Mapbox sort of stepped in to uh, partner with us and made our lives a lot easier. Um, so what we've been doing is rebuilding all of Nextdoor's map experiences to be sort of driven directly by Mapbox and also on one platform within Nextdoor itself as well. Um, so they used to be entirely web driven. They were web views in our native apps and things like that. Um, and so we've sort of taken stock of everything that, that did exist and we've made sure it's fully mobile native, which of course with Mapbox was super easy. Um, but we also took the approach of going server driven and data source agnostic, um, which was a massive undertaking. Um, but what that gained us is that we can use all of Mapbox's features to be a data source for us. We can push sort of the slightly less dynamic data over to Mapbox while keeping the dynamic data in our databases and query for them and then hydrate them. And basically every client gets the same set of described pins from wherever they came from and doesn't really need to understand where they came from, how they should visually be represented, those sort of things. So we can keep the more real-time aspect of it going while keeping the more static things coming from Mapbox and sort of letting it solve a lot of those problems for us. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I think it's like, uh, 
this is very specifically a balanced thing for us, right? Mapbox gives us so much, and yet we also need to do some of our own things. And I, I can't imagine doing that with any of the other SDKs or or really map solutions that are out there um, because they're usually like, yeah, we rendered the map for you. Uh, the rest is up to you. Um, and so, yeah, that's been uh, incredibly helpful for us to to get things off the ground and, and have that flexibility. That's awesome. Good yeah, need to see behind the scenes of an app that I use every day. So thanks for that, Alex. Um, yeah. are, so given that maps and, and custom maps, customized maps are such a core part of the next door experience, uh, can you share any further reflections for folks uh, on why you like to build with Mapbox, maybe over other tools? Um, maybe there are folks in the audience who are still sort of trying to choose a, a way mm -hmm. forward for their app. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think from the very beginning, we're a really tiny team. Like we are, there's, there's four engineers uh, and there's one designer and pretty much one of every other role you would expect. And then not even on some of them because they're splitting their time everywhere. Um, so with Mapbox, having a studio where the designer can go in and learn it and make styles. We've had custom styles per seasonal map that we do, like making sure that the Christmas one or the you know, sort of holiday seasons are really cheerful and exciting. And all the engineers have to do is use that URL. And because of our server driven approach, we don't even have to release code or anything. Uh, we can just make that happen. When we started supporting dark mode, that was again, just like, we didn't do anything. The designer just got excited and made it happen for us. Um, and I think similarly, when it comes to working with the API, pushing massive sets of data back and forth, being able to hop into the studio and verify the tile set actually works and makes sense visually and just sort of being able to play with those various features. We've come up with ideas I don't think we would have come up with because we actually got to just see it and understand it in real context without having to really build something first. Um, that in conjunction with sort of just it being massively consistent, I think especially when Mapbox, uh, the 10 SDK was released for iOS and native, or iOS and Android that really brought it in line with the way we were building on web and everything was just so consistent across all three of them. Um, and I think just the combination of all of those things is like with such a small team, we've been able to do far more than I thought we ever would. Um, and I don't think that would have happened anywhere else. Um, so yeah, Mapbox is, uh, is huge just in the tooling that they give you, let alone the massive support and excitement you get from all of the folks too. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> Alex, that's the, yeah, really, I love Studio. I use Studio a fair bit. Um, and just hearing really, really about how helpful. it helps teams work together more efficiently is a, mm -hmm. a great story. Um, all right, my final question, and then we'll go to audience Q&A. So please you know, put your questions in the chat if you've got some, or, or raise your hand if you've got a question. Um, but my last question, looking to the future, where uh, where are maps going for Nextdoor? How will uh, you use Mapbox to, to get to that vision? Nice. of next door's future maps yeah um yeah you know so i think the this actually is great follow-up from the last question because we're talking a lot about custom maps and that's been a lot of what next door has historically done when focused on maps is do custom things right make a big halloween event and have there be a map that all neighbors can add to or do the cheer map or do a vote map and these sort of more specific things like help map as well is a great example it's been running a little bit longer um, and those have taught us a lot. And being that focus, we've kind of learned where our neighbors find it useful and where they don't. Uh, and so now our sort of future vision is actually just to give neighbors the tools to make those custom maps in a way, sort of more organically, letting them uh, bubble up the ways that our neighbors actually want to talk about things and what they want to show on a map and how those things are kind of ephemeral, right? Through our custom maps, we learned that these ephemeral things are really valuable, but they, they need to go away, right? They don't stay there forever. Halloween isn't a forever thing, but that's happening on a macro, micro, and even potentially larger scale every day. And we can't keep up with that. Um, so a lot of what we're doing is sort of leveraging Mapbox's flexibility and building flexibility on our side to say that pin types, pin icons are more flexible. And we're building our own internal tooling around just being able to say like, hey, there's this like big sports event that's happening in this local area. And we noticed it because of what our users are doing. We're going to just add some sort of nice visuals or facilitate a partnership with 
the local sports team or whatever, and be able to do that without any code happening. Um, mm -hmm. So we're sort of just going more in the direction of we've proven that this works. Let's build ourselves and our neighbors the tools to do that every day and all over the place in ways that we can't even think of. Um, and yeah, I, again, don't think this would be possible without Mapbox because we built everything server-driven and Mapbox first. There's sort of this instantaneous flexibility we gain to just do that and use our own internal moderation systems and all these sort of things and just gain a lot of what all the other teams throughout Nextdoor have done for free because of that approach. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, that's so exciting. I look forward to seeing those uh, new features in, in the app. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're in Q&A time now. So if you have questions for Alex, please go ahead, put them in the chat, or you can also send me a direct message. I've had a few sent to me already. And so uh, starting from the top, I've got a question. Um, I'm interested in adding more developed map features to our app, but I want to build buy-in from the rest of my team and leadership. Could you share more about how you've won exec level support for your work? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I actually wasn't at Nextdoor when the Mapbox partnership originally started. Um, but what I think I, my, from the understanding I've gained in like trying to keep that sort of support going, um, I would just point directly to the, the list of features that Mapbox has and that Mapbox is maps only, right? It's not like you're partnering with a massive company that does 13 million other things. Mapbox is about maps. And if your app needs anything geo-related, let alone maps, they're going to not only partner with you in a way that those other companies can't, they're going to be excited to do it. They're going to be in it with you and they care about what you're building just as much, if not more than you do, because they want to see these things out there. Um, and I think just generally speaking, like there isn't a single problem we've come up with being such a location centered company. I mean, literally to sign up, you have to be able to verify that you live where you live. And that, that is a map feature. That is a geolocation problem. We need to have the data to prove there is a residence there in the first place. Um, that is a completely separate problem than what Discover is making it at Nextdoor. Um, and so I think there's enough of a breadth there that if you are at all a location-based company, Mapbox is going to have every solution you haven't even thought of. Um, and so I think there's just enough breadth there that you can you can uh, dive in and sell it. Uh, also, just get in contact with Mapbox. They're really good at talking you through that and just helping you come up with like, hey, here's all the things you could do and what are your needs? Because I think it's also very company specific, right? Like we have several specific things we point to that are like, this is why we have to be with Mapbox and nobody else. Um, and especially if you are undertaking multiple clients, not just a web app or something, uh, there are no other, that I am aware of, there are no other SDKs that handle things the way Mapbox does and just being consistent across all of those. Yeah, that is a great point. You can you can talk to Mapbox. We're good at selling Mapbox. <laughs> so if you need help with that, uh, we're So sure meetings we're with them are just fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I've got some other questions submitted here. Let's see. So uh, loved hearing about how your engineering and design teams work together on, on the maps. Curious, are you involved in map design decisions too? What does that look like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think especially around sort of the content that's on the map, we're a lot more involved, if that makes sense. Like there is there's kind of sort of two aspects to that of like, what is the content you're putting on the map? How does that look, especially because it's interactive versus how are we styling the roads? How do we make the buildings look? Do we show these sort of POIs or not? And what names do we show at what Zoom levels and all those sort of things? Um, I, I definitely would say we are involved, but one of the, again, benefits of being such a small team is that we might wake up one day and see an amazing design done by our designer and we didn't even know it was going to happen and it's beautiful and fits exactly what we were building um, mm. just because they woke up and wanted to do it. Um, and of course, we review that and everything and go back and forth, but I think that it, that shows the power of it is like when you as a small team don't have the time to think about it, it can still happen anybody in the company can easily hop in there and understand how to use this tool. Um, yeah. 
Nice. You can unleash their creativity as well and tap into exactly. that. I'm a big nice. believer in tooling. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. All right. Well, um, in, we do have a couple of questions submitted. We've got a, a shy audience today. They're all sending them directly to me, but that's okay. Nice. That's in fine. the interest of time, I'm just going to choose one more. Uh, we've got a mm -hmm. future looking question here. Mm -hmm. So uh, across the wider industry of apps that depend heavily on advertising revenue, mm -hmm. uh, seeing interest in how to place advertising within maps because they're such a popular canvas. What do you think about advertising within maps? Is there a way to approach it that balances revenue opportunities with user experience? Mm. Yeah, um, this is a fantastic question. It's something we're actually thinking about a lot now because we've sort of finally got our map platform stood up. We've built some features on it. We're sort of taking in this more general approach. And what that also means is sort of moving away from what we've done in the past is like big partnerships with companies to release a big custom map and build a lot of buzz around it and moving more towards sort of a general day-to-day -day thing that just is happening all the time. Neighbors are making things happen and then businesses see opportunities and want to place ads and those sort of things. Um, and we actually just had a conversation recently with Mapbox and they said something that has stuck in my mind so much uh, that is that ads on a map don't always feel like ads, right? They're, they're inherently contextual. They're about a location. They're about a place you are already looking at. And it's not on a feed. It's not this big, massive, sort of like clear thing that says sponsored. It's just like, hey, this particular business logo is like slightly bigger or happens to have a, a you know a tag on it or a name or something, there is a way that it just feels more natural. It feels like it makes sense. And again, you're already looking at that location. Potentially, you even searched for it. So the only reason it showed up on the map is because the ad is attached to something that you were already going to see. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think there's... I, I personally have felt this too, of just like, I don't like ads. I don't think anybody really likes seeing ads in a giant feed of things. But when I see it on a map, I don't realize it's an ad. It doesn't really feel out of place anymore. Um, and I think Mapbox has a massive SDK that I don't personally know yet because we're sort of just starting to dive into that and understand it. Um, but it clearly integrates well with stacks that already exist that you're likely using for all your other ads and being able to provide your user is sort of one way to say, hey, I want to advertise, I want to sponsor this thing and have that be relevant location-wise and in your other features is a uh, pretty big deal. Well, awesome. That's a great kind of call to action to folks as mm -hmm. something to go uh, think about and explore in the future of, of interactive maps. Well, awesome. wonderful. We're at time. Thank you so much, Alex, yeah. for, Thank you, for joining me and chatting about Nextdoor's great maps. I'll think Anytime of you when I'm using too. the app. Um, and yeah, <laughs> nice. thank you everybody for joining your great questions. Please um, exit this room and head over to the, uh, the other breakout session that you want to join. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Thanks, Marina. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Later.